In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to create five simple but beautiful borders that can be added to your project when it feels like it needs just that little something extra to finish it off. So let's start with the most important one of all, which is the foundation border. Now the beauty of this is you can either use it as a base to prepare your work for a more elaborate border, or you can just do this as a standalone. You can absolutely finish your project with just this single crochet border. I like to get started in a corner, so I'm going to add a slip knot to my hook and do a standing single crochet into the corner. So taking the hook and going into the corner, pull the yarn through, yarn over and pull through the two loops. That's a standing single crochet. For corners, I recommend doing three single crochets. That's going to get you nicely around the corner as well as keep your stitch count even on both sides. Or you can try a single chain two single crochet into the corner instead. That's still going to keep your stitches even on both sides. That chain two is serving as a space. But here I'm just going to do three single crochets. and then evenly work single crochets along the sides. If you're finding that it's getting too wavy, that means you've added too many single crochets and you need to go back and take some out. On the other hand, if it looks like it's pulling and getting too tight, you need to increase and add some extra single crochets. If you have a specific stitch count for your upcoming border, this is a time where you can fudge around with those single crochets to get that stitch count that you need. If you're working on something that has raw edges and you're not quite sure how many single crochets to add, take a look at the stitch that was used for that row and then use single crochets to match the height. Here's a general guide to get you started, but remember the most important thing is just to make it look as even and flat as possible. I also recommend that you check out this video where I talk about using slip stitches on the raw edges before you do your single crochet border. You're going to be amazed at what a difference that makes, so do check that out. To complete the round, add a slip stitch into the very first stitch that you made. And that's all there is to the foundation border. At this point, you can fasten off and be completely finished. If you want to continue on with more rounds of single crochets, then you will just continue on with the same sequence. You'll do three single crochets in your corners and then single crochets along the sides. If you find it difficult to see where your three single crochets are, just remember that the top of your stitch leans slightly to the right if you're right-handed or to the left if you're left-handed. If you want to stay with the same color, work a single into the very first stitch of that corner, and then in the middle stitch, add the three single crochets, and then continue on with the single crochet sequence. If you use the single chain two single for your corners, then you do your single crochet into that very first single, add your corner into the chain two space. We'll just stay consistent with a single chain two single, and then a single crochet in the other single in that corner. And that creates the corner for that round. And then to fasten off, just add a slip stitch into the very first stitch that you made, and you're good to go. The moss stitch, also known as the linen stitch, is such a versatile stitch, and you can make as many rounds of this as you like. Now, ideally, you want to work with an odd number to make this edging, but if you have a foundation border that has even numbers on the sides, don't worry about it. You can fudge it and still make it work. I'm going to do this in a contrasting color just so you can see the stitch. I like to start in the corner, so I'm going to start in the very middle single crochet of my corner. One, two, that's the middle. With a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. You can also fasten on with a slip stitch and chain one to serve as your first single crochet if you like. Once you've formed your corner, chain one, skip a stitch, and work a single crochet into the following stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch, and work a single into the following stitch. And you're just going to continue this all the way across. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the stitch. When you reach the corner, chain one, and in the middle space, do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. 
And you're just going to continue this all the way around. This is such a forgiving stitch. If you get to the corner and it's not lining up, you just make it work. Just skip an extra stitch or work into the next stitch. It really doesn't matter. No one's going to be able to see when it's all said and done. When you reach the end, be sure to do your last chain one and then slip stitch into the very first single that you made. If you want to continue on with more rounds, work your way to the corner and just repeat the sequence. Go in, create a single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet into the same space, and then continue on with the sequence, chain one, and work a single into that chain one space. Chain one, skip one, work into the chain space. So I'm at my corner, don't forget to do your chain one, and then in the corner, single, chain two, single. When you come to the end, don't forget your very last chain one, and then slip stitch into the very first single of the round. Next up is the reversible single crochet, or fondly known as the crab stitch. Crocheters either really love this stitch or have a dislike with it. And that's because even though it's just a single crochet, we're working backwards and it can get a little tricky. But I have a couple of tips that I think will help fix that. And even after trying those tips, if you still don't like it, I have the imitation crab stitch that I think you're really going to like. I'm going to do it in a contrasting color just so you can see the stitch. And for this, I like to start on the side somewhere, not in a corner. I have a slip knot on my hook. I'm doing a standing single crochet to get started. Going into any stitch with my first single crochet. For my first tip, you may want to go up a half or a full hook size for this because we really want to have a more relaxed, looser tension. And you're just going to go into the stitch as if you're doing a single crochet going in. And instead of trying to yarn over and pull it through, you're just going to catch it and pull it through. And then go back to yarn over and pull through too. And notice here, I kept my tension really loose and relaxed. That's the other tip. Try not to be too tight. As you get into a rhythm, you may find that you get tighter and tighter. Just always pull a little bit further than you normally would. So going into the next stitch, we're doing a single crochet. Go into the stitch, catch the yarn. Don't try to do a yarn over, just catch the yarn and pull it through. Not too tight. Yarn over and pull through two. Go into the next stitch, pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to continue on with this, going into the stitch, just pull that yarn through, yarn over, pull through two. When we come to the corner, we're not adding any extra stitches. This is another reason why a larger hook might come in handy because we just want these stitches to be looser than normal. And I'm just going around the corner, going into the stitch, pulling that yarn through and continuing on. Giving myself a little bit more slack here to get around that corner. And you're just going to continue this all the way around. One thing to mention about this stitch, you can only do it for one round. You can't repeat this round after round. So this has to be your very last edge for your border. I'm at the end here. Here's my very first single crochet that I made before I started the crab stitch. You can come in here now and do another crab stitch to finish it off, or you can come in and slip stitch to close into that very first stitch. But I find all of that's a bit messy. So what I do instead, I remove the loop from my hook. I'm just going to release it. And then I'm just going to weave it in. I'm just going to go into the, the base of that single to 
pull it together. And then just go in to feed it into the back. And since I was lazy and I didn't weave in that tail as I went, I'll just take those two ends and tie them together. And then weave in my end. Now, if the crab stitch is still too fussy for your liking, you can try the imitation crab. For this, we're still working with single crochets, but we're going to go back to our normal routine of working from right to left if you're right-handed. Place your hook into any stitch and begin your single crochet. Pull the yarn through. You want to be very relaxed and loose with this. Now, before we yarn over and complete our stitch, we're going to take our hook and just rotate it from right to left one time, making sure it's still nice and loose. Yarn over and pull through two. Now let's do that again. Going into the next stitch, go through, yarn over and pull your loop through. Now take your hook and twirl it from right to left. Yarn over and pull through the stitches. Now, as you can see there, it can get really tight. So this is where you want to keep an eye on your tension. So going in, Pull your yarn through, twist your hook, yarn over, pull through the two loops. And this is going to give you that imitation crab stitch. And you're just going to continue this all the way around, keeping an eye on your tension. Especially around those corners. Give yourself a little bit of slack since we're not doing any increases. And just like the other one, you can do a slip stitch to complete the stitch, but I like to take this and just kind of make it, or try to make it look as close to the stitch as I can. So I'm just going to snip my yarn, pull that loop through, so I'm just going behind it, to kind of line it up. And then I'll come in near that other stitch or tail, I should say. And I'm just going to tie those together and then weave them in. And there's the comparison. Here's the original crab stitch and this is the imitation crab stitch. And now we're working on the spider stitch. Now don't let the name fool you. This is a beautiful, delicate stitch and very easy to do. Now ideally you want to work with an odd number to make this edging, but if you have a foundation border that has even numbers on the sides, don't worry about it. You can fudge it and still make it work. We're only talking about one single crochet here. So I'm adding a slip knot to my hook. I like to do a standing single crochet for my stitches. And for this, I am going to start in a corner again. If you did a single chain two single, then work into that chain two space. I did three single crochets, so I'm going to find the middle one. I'm going to go in, pull my yarn through, yarn over and pull through two. That's a standing single crochet, but fasten on however you like best. But our corner is single, chain two, single. So I've done my single, chain two, and then a single right back into the same stitch. And now we're just going to work across with this sequence. Skip one. In the following stitch, do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all in the same stitch. Skip one. In the following stitch, do a single, chain one, single. And we're just going to continue this all the way across. Skip, single, chain one, single. Now, if you have an even number on the side and you come up to this point and you see you have another extra stitch here, just skip over it and work into the corner. 
If that's pulling too tightly for you, then chain one to help yourself get to that corner. Remember, nobody's going to be able to see this from a distance. They're not going to be able to see that you, you lost a single crochet there. But I am on track here, so I'm just going to skip one and work into my corner with a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then we're back to the side, skip one, single, chain one, single. And at this point, if you are finished, you can slip stitch into the very first single that you made and fasten off. But the beauty of this one is you can continue on round after round if you want to build a wider border. So I just slip stitched into the first single crochet there. But now I'm going to continue on and work into that first corner. We have a chain two space and you're just going to repeat the same sequence. I'm going to go in with a single, chain two, oops, and a single, all in the same space. And then to continue around, you're just going to work into the center of the previous stitch that you made. So here where it's the single chain one single, you're going to work your stitch into there. So going into the middle, single, chain one, single. So you're forming your next round right above the round that you previously made. See, here's your single, chain one, single. Just skip over, go right into the middle of that to create your new stitch. Single, chain one, single. And you're just going to continue this all the way around. And then when you come back to another corner, you're just going to skip right into that corner with a single, chain two, single. Work all the way around to the very first stitch on the side. And that's all there is to it. When you come to the end, just add a slip stitch into the very first single that you made in that corner and fasten off however you like best. And for our final edge, we're doing the zigzag border. I'm adding a slip knot to my hook. Now for this one, you can't repeat this one round after round. This is for your very final edge. So if you want to have a wider border, be sure to do other stitches beforehand before you do this one. Fasten on wherever you like best. And instead of doing a single crochet, I'm just doing a slip stitch. After your slip stitch, do a chain one. And we're just going to continue this all the way around. Going into the next stitch, form a slip stitch. Keep an eye on your tension here. You don't want to be too tight. And then chain one. You may find it easier to work with a larger hook. That'll give it a little bit more relaxation. So slip stitch, chain one. Slip stitch, chain one. When you come to your corner, just continue on with the same sequence. We're not doing any kind of increasing here. We're just working our way around the edge. Notice here, I'm very relaxed with my tension, not pulling too tightly. When you come to the end, add a slip stitch into the very first stitch that you made and fasten off. Such a simple stitch and it gives such a neat effect. Without a lot of effort, you can make a beautiful edge to any of your projects with these simple stitches. I really do hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, a like is always appreciated. If there's a certain border that you're interested in learning how to do, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know what you're interested in seeing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. No, uh, 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 sir. Okay, somebody's taking a bath, so I'm going to pause. Busted. Do you mind? We're trying to film a video. You don't mind? All right.